Well, thanks for checking out another clip on the web show. Always fun catching up with Nathan and the Carnage Corbett. The explosion. Big fights back on the Gold Coast this Saturday night. And, of course, just inspiring being around Nathan, watching him train. I followed him around the world for his fights and uh, showing the story behind the story. Unfortunately, I missed the big one in Jamaica. But we all know how that one ended up there. The right man standing at the end. But flashing forward the August 5th, Thursday on the Gold Coast, early morning, Nathan picking me up and on our way to a radio station. Yeah, off to CFM. Here they are on the radio now. <laughs> they haven't, um, haven't followed the coast for 18 months, so I haven't really had to do much radio. All the Brisbane Melbourne fights, I don't really bother with any um, sort of media like that. So it's good to be home and get on the local, local stations. Gailey and the crew. Yeah, so Gailey and the crew, a bit of irony there in that I worked with these guys for pretty much on and off 10 years almost, so it's pretty crazy to head to CFM. There you go, 90.9, and uh, arriving at the station in Southport, making our way inside, catching up with Gailey there, and on our way to the studio. They're actually doing a TV show now that's live as well as the morning crew, so it's uh, pretty awesome to be in the studio, and this is where we pick things up with the carnage. And we have a world champ in the studio, and uh, also Nathan Corbett's in here as well. <laughs> Sorry, I just, you know, world champion. Uh, at Muay Thai, mate. Now, it's in the 86 kilo category, isn't it? Around uh, this, that? Uh, this fight's at 90 kilos. This one's at 90, yeah, but 90. what do you hold your world titles at? At 86. At 86, 86 so yes. I was ar around the mark. Uh, now, you've just ha you just had a fight against another bloke that uh, has a really big reputation throughout Europe and the rest of the world, and everyone's been waiting for you to fight this guy. He wouldn't come out here, and uh, you fought him in Jamaica. He stipulated that in the fight that there'll be no elbows, which you're known for in Muay Thai. Uh, he didn't want that to happen, but you said, I'll fight you anyway. What happened? You knocked him out, and then they turned the fight on you. Well, exactly what happened? Yeah, basically, they got into the third round, uh, hit him with a good punch, knocked him out. Uh, the referee gave him a very long count on 10. Uh, he got up, and I was over in the neutral corner. Uh, they flagged the fight off, but really low. And then he stepped, the referee stepped out of the way and I just saw the um, Tyrone, my opponent, standing there with his hands up in front of me, so I just ran across, gave him a couple more. He went down and they decided to turn the decision to a no contest instead of a KO win. So, so they, they weren't clear on the decision that they, they made, clear. so you didn't know what was going on? No, nah, they weren't clear. I, I just saw the straight line him in front of me and went for it. <laughs> the bullet of game. Yeah, so it's pretty much the thing that everyone wants to know on the media, that farce of a decision in Jamaica. But uh, here we are with Renee, and uh, she's doing her best with the pads. One, two. <sighs> My boyfriend better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Ready? Okay. One, two. And oh, oh, yeah. yes. Renee, I'm scared. That, that first. Let's go. Yeah, so some great promo there for the big event explosion on Saturday night at the convention centre. And uh, later in the day, Nathan picked me up once again. It was a busy day. Yeah, I've got to run off to a press conference where they've got all the fighters meeting at Hard Rock Cafe, which is one of the sponsors for the event. Yep. Um, so they've you know, hopefully some press interview with a few of uh, the local. Um, networks and uh, I believe the bulletin are going to come there as well and do a photo shoot, a bit of a standoff sort of shot for the weekend bully. Yep. Uh, this will be the first time I actually get to see my opponent uh, in the flesh, so it'll be a bit of a. It could, it could be intense. It could be uh, depends on the arrogance of them. You know. So if he stands up and, and is really casual and smiling, and says good yeah, luck. Yeah, then I'll be sweet. But if he stands up with that look like I'm going to smash yeah, it up. Yeah, like Spong, you know, the last <laughs> fight it was all arrogance because of the hype and the build up. And, you know, I hope that he's come here with a little bit less arrogance. He can fight hard, but chill out, man, you know. So, and then what's what's the plan then? you got a thing of tuna here. Is that the oh, I asked for lunch. <laughs> can of tuna. Yeah. That's a, bit, that's a bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> The, the things you do, yeah, exactly. The things we do, you know, to sacrifice to, to make to be the best, I guess. So, some days I ask myself, what am I doing? But <laughs> <laughs> at the end of it, it's always a nicer picture. Yeah. Once it's accomplished. A coffee and a few thoughts, and everything's alright. Coffee right. and a few slices of cake, <laughs> and then I'm a happy boy. Yeah, so there's a quick story there, and it's not easy in cutting weight. But we arrived at the Hard Rock Cafe in the heart of Surface Paradise, just near Cavill Ave and uh, met all the different media there from the TV stations and the newspaper and there's a shot of all the guys competing an explosion it's going to be huge on Saturday night there's a legend right there Ramon Deck is shaking the hand of another legend the carnage 
And uh, this is the moment where they had the stare down, but it was good vibes, a smile, and good sports between those two guys. It's going to be a great fight. Before I catch up with uh, the opponent, it was awesome to have a quick chat with legend Ramon Deckers. All right, in Surface Paradise, just uh, finished the press conference with Ramon Decker. How are you? I'm fine. Welcome back to Australia. Thank you. Can I ask a little bit? I do a show about stories, man. So if you don't mind telling me, how did you get into fighting? Why was it? Why was fighting something you did? For me? Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't like uh, soccer and all those other sports, you know. I like martial arts, and uh, that's how I started. Were you always someone that was committed to it? Like, that takes a lot of commitment to, to follow that, right? You must work hard. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So what's been the highlights for you if you look back on your career? Like, what's the best moments for you? I did 210 fights, so it was very difficult to, to say. <laughs> uh, but I think that my career in Thailand, I fought uh, for about eight years in a row over there. All right. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about Michael that's fighting Nathan Corbett. What, what's, what's his strengths? Nah, he got very good sparring partners. He, he spar every week with uh, Alistair Overheim, uh, Stefan Leko, uh, Kukansaki. So I think uh, he got enough, enough strength and experience to, uh, to fight. And can I ask you a little bit about Nathan? Like, what's his reputation like in the Netherlands? Obviously after the Spong fight, but uh, what do you know about Nathan? What do you think? Yeah, and they've got some bad things. Uh, uh, they said some bad things about him, you know, uh, they, really? that he hit after the break and uh, that's why uh, Spong go down. But I, I saw the fight and uh, yeah, he looked stronger. So it was uh, just a good punch. All right, buddy. Well, great to meet you and uh, yeah, all the best for your charge. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so there's one of the all-time legends of Muay Thai saying that Nathan got in with a good shot and was the stronger of the fighters. So uh, that's good justice there for the carnage. But it was time to catch up with the man who's stepping in the ring with the carnage, Michael Andrade. And here he is. With uh, the man who's taken on the carnage uh, on the weekend, man. Good luck for that. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about why you got into fighting. Like, what's the story? How come you ended up being a uh, Muay Thai fighter? If you don't mind me asking. Um, since I am uh, a little guy, I really like to fight, and uh, my father put me on, on on fighting because I was always uh, you get in trouble. Uh, no, in trouble, <laughs> but I was uh, a trouble kid. Oh yeah. And I really like to fight, and uh, since. Uh, uh, first I trained in Rotterdam and then after I got a contract at Golden Glory in our training Breda and uh, I trained with good fighters and a uh, lot of sparring, heavy sparring with a lot of K1 fighters and uh, now I uh, fight uh, the Nathan. Yeah, what's his reputation like in Amsterdam? Like I just asked Ramon there after the Spong fight, it was a big fight, he went over there and knocked him down but what's the reputation like for Carnage? Like what do you get told or what do you think when you watch videos about him? I think he's a uh, it's okay fighter, but uh, I think uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's possible to beat him. Okay. And I uh, get uh, good training, and uh, I saw the fight against Pong, and I was um, not so uh, not so uh, intimidated. I, no, really. And uh, I I was supposed to fight Spong also, but. Uh, the management don't want the, his management don't want uh, me to fight him in the arena. So, uh. and oh, there you go. Well, you're taking on the big challenge, man. Coming to Australia to fight Nathan in his backyard. What uh, if I can ask you? What do you think your strengths are? If you talk about your own fighting, where do you think your strengths lie? My, my what? Like strengths as a fighter. Like what do you think you're very good at? I I uh, I when I step into the ring I'm I in my mind I always want to win so I go always to fight and not uh, I fight home. Good for you, buddy. Nice to meet you. All the best on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so it was fun having a quick chat with those guys. There's the poster for Explosion. If you haven't got your tickets yet, check out Rising Promotions and there's Ray from the company uh, proudly showing the belt there. It's going to be absolutely huge. Explosion Saturday night on the Gold Coast. Carnage doing his thing in the main event. There he is chatting with Paul Slawinski. It's going to be awesome. Hope to see you there.